Okay, the virtual meeting for December 17th, um, virtual council meeting for December 17th is now called to order, Madam Clerk. The council of the city of Harrahan was unable to operate due to quorum requirement in compliance with LARS 4219. We will be meeting via video conference. Okay, Madam Clerk, pledge please. The pledge of allegiance to the flag. The United States of America and to the Republic for oh, which it stands. One nation, nation, nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice. To justice for all. For all. All right, Councilman Asbel. Present. Councilman Buddy. Present. Councilman Chatelaine. Councilman Johnston. Present. Councilman Wheeler. Present. Mayor Bodier. Present. Police Chief Walker. Here. Fire Chief St. Cyr. Absent. Finance Director Todd Tunion. Present. City Attorney Scott Stansberry. Present. And Municipal Attorney Nicole Lee is present. Just a quick update on some things that we've been working on and, um, and a quick shout out. I wanna put a, you know, really thank the uh, maintenance department, the uh, fire department and the police department you know, with help through uh, this past hurricane season. Um, you know, we, we avoided a bunch, but we did get one at the very tail end and uh, everybody put a real team effort out to get out there and really work hard and get the streets cleaned up. Um, it was, it was a great team effort. I love to see the city come together. And, uh, and I think it really worked out well for us. And we've learned a lot again this year, like we should do every year. Um, we, we have some things that we've been working on, some new exciting ideas. Uh, we've been talking to AT&T about, about providing better technology to help us respond to emergencies. Um, we've also been talking with Canadian National, which is the railroad that you see with the CN on the side of the car. And they've expressed some interest in helping us with Zerang Park and, uh, and possibly uh, helping us you know, with the railroad festival since it is a railroad. Um, and we're also talking to Noah Gold, a professional rugby club about putting on a clinic and a fundraiser at the, at the uh, playground, and also maybe making more of a significant, a significant impact in our community. And that's just a few of the things we got going on. We really, you know, we really try to reach and, and see and try to unturn every stone we can to involve people in the city of Harahan and bring it back to the prominence that it once was. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have a motion to amend the agenda to add proposed ordinance 2020-29 to ordinances for introduction, the title of which is an ordinance amending the Harahan Code of Ordinances by the addition of Article 9, False Fire Alarms, Section 5890 through 58 and 9 to Chapter 58, Nuisances to declare repeated false fire and or emergency alarms, nuisances, and to set penalties for repeated false alarms. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Councilman Asbill to add said ordinance. What is that ordinance number one more time? 2020-29. 2020-29 to the agenda. Can I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Uh, five. This was any yeas? Nays? Four yeas. No, no nays, one absent. Four Thank you. It's been added. Thank you. All right. Special presentation number one. Edward A. Holmberg III is a proclamation. Okay, here you go. Whereas Edward A. Humberg III retired from being the administrator of the New Orleans Fiscal Office on October 30th, 2020. And whereas in 1976, Edward graduated from the University of New Orleans with a bachelor's degree in, in accounting and was hired by the state of Louisiana Office of the Secretary, where he worked for 44 years, where Edward distinguished himself as a dedicated, loyal, and hardworking public servant, and whereas Edward provided, un, I can't read this, what do you even have? And, oh, invaluable leadership and guidance through these work, through the, through the work that he did with. Um, Edwards is married to Charlotte, and together they shared three children and two grandchildren. And whereas Edward lives a quiet life characterized by devotion of his faith, family, and friends. Now, therefore, I, Timothy Bodier, mayor of the city of Arian, by virtue of authorization vested in me, do hereby proclaim October 30th, 2020, in the city of Harahan, Edward A. 
Holmberg the third day in honor of his retirement and ask our citizens and friends to acknowledge and celebrate with him these wonderful, this wonderful milestone in his life, in his life. And witness thereof, I have hereunto said my hand and cause of this seal to the city of Harrahan affixed this 15th day of December and the year of our Lord, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Edward, for your service to this community and every community you represented. Madam Clerk. New business number two, Chief Walker, current state of the Harrahan Police Department. First, um, good evening to everybody, Assistant Chief. Thanks here myself, we're both back at work. I was out with the virus. I wanna thank everyone for the calls, the messages, the emails, the cards, and most importantly, the prayer. Um, this virus is real, folks, please stay safe. Oh, so Halloween night, Chief St. Chair, myself, the members of the police department were on Stone Lane and Dosha, and there was probably four to 500 trick-or-treaters that were out. Not many residents participated. Around 8.30, the street was clear, and no incident. Also in October, our department participated again with the Drug Enforcement Agency with the semi-annual drug take-back program at police headquarters and also at the Walgreens drugstore, 8225 Justin Highway. We had one of the biggest take backs that we've ever had since I've been here. Over 160 pounds were turned in. I might add that the Harrington Police Department and also Walgreens Drugstore would both have drug take back boxes. Uh, ours was in our lobby at the police department 24 hours a day, accessible. The one at Walgreens was in the rear of the store by the pharmacy. Um, remember, if you see something, say something. Don't hesitate to call 911. Madam Clerk. Approval of the minutes. Reading of the minutes of the council meeting on October 15th. Public to dispense with the reading of the minutes. Now you want to give anybody a chance to raise their hand? Public hearing is now open. Sure. Okay. No hands raised. Okay. Right. Public, public hearing is now closed. I have a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes. I mean, approval of the minutes by Councilman Asbill. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Four yeas, zero nays, one absent. Uh, the minutes are approved. Approval of the minutes of the council meeting on October 15th. Okay, we're going to be open for public hearing. No hands raised. Okay. We, sorry, just uh, if, if we can just point out to the citizens that they want to comment on something to raise their hand in the little chat box area. I don't know if we gave that instruction this time. Okay, no hands being raised. We'll now close public hearing. Do I have a motion to dispense with the approval of the, the dispense with the, um, the approval of the minutes? It's not dispense where we're doing dispense the with a motion for the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to dispense with the approval? With we're just motioning to approve the just minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. All right, move, here we go. Move to approve the minutes. Okay, we've got a motion by Councilman Asbill, second by. Second. Second by Councilman Johnson. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Four Yay. yeas, zero nays, one absent. Uh, minutes are approved. Madam Clerk, communications. Reading of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board on November 4th. Okay, public hearing is now open. Raise your hand if you'd like to speak. Okay, no one raising their hand. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, do we have a motion with, to dispense with the reading of the minutes from the planning and zoning from November 4th, 2020? Do we have a motion? Motion. Second by Councilman Buddy, second by? Second. Second by Councilman Johnson, all in favor? Yay. Okay. Uh, yay, yay, zero nays, one absence. An approval of the minutes of the planning and zoning board on December 4th. A public hearing is now open. Please raise your hand. Let's see. Okay, no one raising their hand. Public hearing is now closed. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes from the planning and zoning from December 4th, 2020? A motion? A motion by Councilman Buller, sure. second by Councilman Buddy. All in favor? Okay. Yay. 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 Zero nays, one absent. Ordinance ordinances for approval. Um, we're on resolutions. Let's see. Oh no, ordinances. Oh. Yeah, right. 
right, right there. There are no resolutions and ordinances for approval. Um, the following ordinance, this is proposed ordinance number 2020-16. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Chatelaine and seconded by Councilman Asville. Okay, we'd like to open now public hearing. Wait. Anyone want to speak on this ordinance, please raise your hand. Let me just read the title real quick, Mayor. Um, in order to the Harrian Code of Ordinances by the addition of Article 4, Electronic Enforcement to Chapter 50, Motor Vehicles. Okay, public hearing is now open. Okay, no hands raised. Public hearing is now closed. There is no... Oh, there is somebody's at the hand up. Yes. Okay. Hello. Okay, we, we can hear you. I'm against this ordinance. I don't think we need speeding cameras in the city of Harahan. We have a good police force. Let them you do their job. Okay. Okay, public hearing is now closed. Council discussion. I actually agree with Miss Judy, and uh, it's the uh, same with Mr. Uh, Gregory. He came up at last meeting we had, and he he was uh, he spoke his piece about it, um, saying it's a money grab, and I do believe it is a money grab. I will be voting against it. I think the ordinance uh, needs work. We made an effort uh, recently to try to get together, uh, one of the other councilmen and I, and. Uh, City Attorney Scott Stansberry. We weren't able to do it uh, because of scheduling conflicts. Um, and, and apparently, uh, no other city has had its ordinance tested in court. At least that's my latest understanding. Uh, when this ordinance was drafted, I think some of us understood that uh, we were using a, an ordinance from a city where it had been tested in court and withheld uh, the scrutiny of a challenge. Um, so I would like to defer to the ordinance. I would like to call for the vote. All right, well, Mr. Buddy said called for the deferral first. So. Um, like uh, we, have, we have a motion on the floor for a deferral. Do I have a second? All right, no second. Mr. Buddy's motion uh, dies. Okay, can I have a uh, motion for the vote? I mean, uh, call for the vote. All in favor? All right, all you guys in favor of our proposed ordinance 2020 16. Can y'all hear me? Oh, I can't hear that. Oh, they were they were they have a, a technical difficulty. One second. Okay. Can I hear y'all? Can y'all hear me now? Yeah, we heard you before. Yes, we can hear you. I didn't hear the vote. I'm sorry. So we're not we're not deferring. If no one else has discussion, I guess we just vote on the ordinance. Uh, Eric actually just came in. Might want to see if Eric has any comments. Eric, the the yeah, we can see you just fine, Eric. Wait, he's got to get his mic on. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Thank you. Yes. What was that door, Eric? Right. Sorry, guys. Yeah, so Eric, we're in, we're in a discussion on the first ordinance, if you have any comments on it. I'll let you comment on it, and then I'm going to comment on it, if you don't mind. I'm against that first ordinance for the digital camera deal. Uh, the, the way I look at it is, if the Harry and Police Department takes their cameras, shoots a radar at somebody doing 40 miles an hour in a 30 miles an hour speed zone, it issues them a ticket. That happens at 1055. At 1105, this guy gets in an accident, hit, kills somebody, 
and he's intoxicated. If we'd have made that traffic stop, we would have eliminated that. So I'm going to be a no vote on this. All right. The reason why, I guess the reason why this ordinance initiated is because there were some residents in the city that were having just consistent traffic problems on their street repeatedly. And it was hard for the officers to be there all the time sitting in that one spot, um, especially um, Oak Street and um, um, East and, um, and then uh, Hickory. I'm mean, Hickory, I'm not Hickory and then uh, River Road. Um, so that was why how the ordinance was actually, it was citizens that actually asked to, uh, to do some investigation in some, some digital traffic enforcement, but you know, it's, it's your guys prerogative on how you vote. So, all right, so we call in for the vote, all in favor? All opposed? Hey. 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 All right. Zero yeays, five nays, or, or fails. Madam Clerk? Pro proposed ordinance number 2020-24. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asbell and seconded by Councilman. Who would like to second this one? I'll second it. Thank you. Uh, an ordinance implementing a hiring freeze for Harrahan Police Department of the City of Harrahan in accordance with LSARS 33423.2. Okay, anyone want to speak on this ordinance? Public hearing is now open. Any hands, Nicole? I can't see him. I can't, no, sir. Okay, no hands. Public hearing is now closed. Uh, council discussion? Move to defer this ordinance to the next meeting. Okay. To the, next, to, to the well, January regularly scheduled meeting. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Councilman Asbill to defer proposed ordinance 2020-24 to the January meeting. Um, do I have a second? Before, before we vote, and I don't want to forget Councilman Asbill, uh, I want to chat with you about section three. Um, so maybe we'll do that offline. Ten four. Thank you. Okay, motion to defer, do I have a second? Second. Second by who is that? Chatteling. Oh, I second by Chatteling, all in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Motion is deferred. I mean, ordinance is deferred. Sorry. Uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, proposed ordinance number 2020-25. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Chatelaine and seconded by Councilman. Who would like to second this one? I'll take it. Oh, as well. An ordinance approving the preliminary subdivision of lot A2B1, Soniat or Chapatula subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, into lot A2B1A, Soniat or Chapatula's plantation subdivision, in lots nine through 14, Colonial Place, phase one, all pursuant to a plan made by Ronald Clement, PLS, dated September 24, 2020. And we do have someone that raised their hand, let's see. Okay, the public hearing is now open. Okay. Okay. Uh, Justin, should we unmute him? All right, Justin. Good evening. Uh, Justin Schmidt, 909 Poydras Street. Uh, I'm a land use attorney here in the town, uh, and I represent nine separate property owners on Colonial Club Drive across from the proposed um, uh, resubdivisions that we're going to see in 2025 and 2026. Um, my comments on both of them are probably the same, uh, although I'm late coming to the game. I've got caught up as best I can, and it, it seems like there's already been some deviations from some of the agreements that were made back in um, over the course of the development of this, specifically in um, Ordinance 1777, when we're restricting lots, um, lot access to um, not be on Colonial Club Drive. Um, there apparently was supposed to be a secondary uh, main entrance over on um, the west side of the property from Jefferson Highway. There's a couple of problems I see we're asking to put in this particular docket um, another 
uh, another eight houses along that nine, that row of nine closer to Jefferson Highway, um, where there really wouldn't, shouldn't have been anything. And then we're asking to put another 34 homes um, a little further back. And then there's still a big question mark. The problem is Colonial Club Drive is 20 feet wide. I measured it at five, six, six different points this morning with a uh, ruler, a uh, walker, and at the, at the various fire hydrants along, um, and those were the spots, but nowhere near the proper width of a street to handle this much traffic on these streets to, uh, for all the houses that y'all are building back that you want to, you know, or, have been applied for back there. You've also got a, a significant sewer problem. I've got a copy of the sewer lift map that I'm looking at that's on your website and I've visited with Jefferson Parish as well. In fact, last week at last Wednesday's parish meeting, there was a solicitation for sewer uh, some sewer work to be done along Colonial Drive. So that's in the hopper. None of this really has been addressed by the developer so far. We're looking at a, and the biggest problem is how many more houses are we going to get out of the, the rear portion, uh, what's left between um, the second, the, 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 the new 34 houses in the river, I guess. My clients, um, you know, it's been rumored that this is going to be a gated community. The driveway um, going in will be directly into their bedroom. So you're talking about at least, you know, 76 is what's permitted under the ordinance right now. 76 different homes with multiple cars having lights come in and out at all hours of the day. Not to mention, and, and that's mind you, on a on a public right of way that's not even that doesn't even meet your subdivision regulations right now. Colonial Club Drive again, it is black top, twenty feet wide, no sidewalks. So you're also talking about putting more traffic on a street that has no pedestrian sidewalks, which is a safety concern, all the way down and increasing the volume of people going back and forth and increasing sewer problems that both Jefferson Parish and individuals within Harahan have already acknowledged are, are significant. I'm sure this is not new information to you. I'm sure I'm not surpri you know, surprising you with anything that your, your sewer system right now is substandard. And it's certainly not going to take the additional weight that the commercial, um, Blake project is put on in addition to 76 or more houses that are proposed here. And so we're really looking for um, some concessions by the developer to widen um, widen Colonial Drive. The, 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 there needs to be a, a better entrance exit. There's not enough time. If they put a gated community there, there's going to be queuing. There's not, a, there's not a dedicated turning lane where residents are going to get stuck in traffic and try to pass and get head on to double yellow line along Colonial Drive. There really needs to be another entrance into this subdivision on the west side of the property. It seems like, and again, I, I don't know for sure, but it seems like from what I've been told, the Colonial Co Club Drive neighbors were sacrificed at the at the request of the subdivision on the other side of the project because they didn't want to draw, they didn't want a street over on their side in their backyards. Well, I mean, the problem is this is a this is a busy street in front yards, not in the backyard. And so this is really up to the developers to make this happen. The 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 the, the pleas that the the city needs the tax dollars, just that argument you know, is over with, and, and that was great for the 80s, but it doesn't work in the 2020s. We know Pardon better me. than that. Pardon me, Madam Clerk, I hear the timer. Is the time up? You're muted. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Madam. Yes, sir, three minutes is up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, Miss Judy wants to speak. Let me get Miss Judy unmuted. Oh, you're on. Right. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you reread re the date on that survey? The date? Um, September 24th, 2020. Okay, because you read 1224, and I was wondering how you do that. I'm against this ordinance. I mean, this is crazy that, that you can't put all of these cars on Colonial Club Drive. That that street was never designed to take that kind of pressure. There is no underground drainage there. There's nothing there. There are no ditches even. Okay, we need to, to protect the people who are already here and make sure that this project this project does correctly is done correctly. Thank you. Excuse me, Madam Clerk. I would like to concede my time for public hearing back to Mr. Schmidt to have my three minutes from David Trepanier, Jr. That, uh, is that something we do? According to standard parliamentary right, but procedure parliamentary, that should be allowed, I understand. Right, but parliamentary procedure applies to the board, not to the guests, not to the citizens. That's fine. We still have another matter. We can I can finish up on Dave. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, and I have an emailed comment from Maurizio um, Francesco on that. I'm going to read. Excuse me. I, I'll make a motion to give this guy three more minutes. Okay. Okay. By Councilman, I'll, I'll second that. By Councilman Wheeler for three more minutes. For I don't know who that was. Yeah, I guess Mr. Schmidt. Yes. All in favor? Yes. Yes. All in favor? Yay. 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 Thank you, Councilman. I, I really don't have a whole lot more other than to answer your questions. I think, I, I mean, the, the main takeaways here is, you know, what, what I see coming in as, as kind of late to the game is th there were there was an agreement with these developers. And, and I, I've, I've, I'm very familiar with these developers. I, I've, I've worked on projects for the past 22 years around town. You know, there's money to be made in here. Uh, I, I, I use the maxim, you don't need to hit home runs. You know, it, it, those of you that know baseball know that, that, that singles and doubles are the ones that win the, the championship. You know, this can be a very nice subdivision and it could be a very good benefit for the town of, uh, for the city of Harahan, but we can't sacrifice. It, it's going to be a disaster with your infrastructure right now, if you allow this to go without tempering it significantly, there has to be a significant entrance, the entrance, and, and it was it was contemplated back when y'all initially did it, you know, it was in there and then somebody gave it up, but it was there to have the main entrance off of Jefferson Highway initially. Now we're putting it, as Ms. Johnson said, on a street that has no sidewalks, no drainage ditches. It isn't wide enough to get around. I almost got clipped by a truck when I was measuring things this morning, you know, measuring the width of it. It is literally from, from blade of grass to blade of grass, 20 feet at, at the most. That is not a safe way to drive. That's not where a, a child should be, you know, on a bicycle with cars going back and forth. There, there are options to put this over on the other side, uh, the main entrance, and to, to, to leave this as a very, you know, an emergency entrance if you have to do that. It could be a, a service entrance or a turnaround, but you shouldn't have the majority of 76 homes going through one gate like yeah. they proposed. And that's another problem too. I, I think the, the city is being myopic in not requiring this developer to give them the plans for the next phase of this. This needs to be a complete master plan. They're doing this piecemeal because piecemeal, it looks a little bit. It's like, how do, how do, you, how do you bite an, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. This development, you need to see the entire thing and be able to, to, to measure it and reduce any you know, impacts on the, the existing neighborhoods all at the same time. Even if they're not going to build it now, we need to know how many lot sites are in that next, that, that next piece. You know, are we gonna have another amendment to the, the, the ordinances that say, okay, well, we're gonna allow how, you know, we're gonna allow driveways now on, on the front, uh, I mean, uh, fronting on um, 
Colonial Club Drive? Are we going to allow uh, more traffic and, and so forth? I, I just, we really, I think this is premature. I think this could be a, a development that the neighborhood can embrace. But I think given the questions about the infrastructure, especially the sewerage system and the street system, there really needs to be a, you need to pump the brakes and step back from this thing. Let's let the engineers that are working on this tell us why there can't be a development, you know, why there can't be streets elsewhere and find some other alternatives um, to what's been planned right now. This just isn't, there's too many questions right now to, um, to pass this as, it, as, it, as it's been presented. Thank you. Okay, and I have another email. I have an emailed comment from Mauricio Francesco that he asked me to read. Um, it's dear mayor and fellow council members, I would like to address ordinance number 2020-25 and 2020-26, but we're not there yet. As a citizen and as a Harrahan um, zoning and planning board member, I want to express my support for voting yes and approve this pre preliminary development study. It's time this development moves forward. Please understand, I mean no disrespect to the current administration, council, Harrahan planning and zoning, or all past councils, boards, or mayors. I am tired of hearing that previous ordinances and memorandum agreements are not legal. Memorandum agreements exist in public and private sectors and happen daily. Those, agreement, those agreements are contracts that can be held up or challenged in court. So I ask if anyone feels that current or past ordinances or memorandum agreements are not, are not legal, then that person or persons can put up the money, hire an attorney and challenge it. At this point in time, we have a developer who has the full right and authority to develop his property and, and is following all laws during its development. I have done my research on this matter the Louisiana Supreme Court will side with the landowner if any further delay or obstruction interferes with their benefits or, or enjoyment their prop their property. There is case law dated back as far as 1920 Smith versus the city of Shreveport. The Louisiana Supreme Court sided with the landowner, and that happened on many cases as the court set pre precedents in siding with the landowner. Friends of mine who own property around there and fellow citizens call me and ask me what is going, what is going on, if I can share my insights and conversations about the development. Most of them are happy that these lots will be large and not cookie cut homes with lots 50 by 100 deep. If this administration and current city council is truly serious in moving this city forward, then I would recommend overruling the Harry and Planning and Zoning Board 5-4 down vote and allow this pre preliminary study move forward. Delay tactics cost uh, cost the developer money and cost the city well needed tax revenue. And that looks. Who, who, who is that, please? Who is that statement from? I'm sorry, I missed it, Nicole. Uh, that was Maurizio Francesco. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, anyone else? Any more hands? Okay. Public hearing is now closed. Nicole, can I speak? Oh, I'm sorry. You have uh, one more if we if we the council approves. Is that you, Dane? Yeah. No, it's uh, Sue Benton. Okay. Um, a, a couple of things. I agree with everything that um, the attorney said, and um, you know I've said from the beginning there needs to be a total plan approved all at one time. This piecemeal. Uh, it's like walking on quicksand. I can't tell you how many plans I've seen. Now I see a sign that says we want 100 homes when it was supposed to be 75 homes. What Did, did we get a new um, drainage plan with this additional, uh, these additional homes being added? Um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I've never seen the, uh, the real drainage plan and I don't think one has really been done. Um, I feel like the city is rolling over for this developer mm -hmm. at the expense of the citizens on Colonial. We've lived here for 30 plus years, most of us, and it's totally changing our environment. And I just feel like more consideration should be given to us. The street can't handle the traffic, period. 
and the, the sewer system I know is past capacity. So those are big issues. And, and the drainage plan, I wanna see a good drainage plan and none has been provided. So I hope you'll, you'll think about the citizens when you vote tonight. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Dane Doucette, let me unmute him. He wants to speak. Uh, Nicole, I agree with uh, Mr. Schmidt, and I agree with what Sue Benton just said, that I think so much more needs to be done uh, other than just come in and say, you know, I agree with the eight lots in the front that, that a number of councilmen voted for, and it was commercial adjacent or budding colonial, and let's swap that for something else. I get that. But what I don't get is that six more and Ed Suffern, Wayne Cody, Jack Capella, and Danny McCarran have always said, we're building houses all the way down Colonial. And recently they wanted to act like they were being benevolent and said, you know what? We don't want 75 feet along Colonial anymore. We want to give you 150 feet. Well, that's a joke. They only want to give 150 feet for one reason. They want to build houses all the way down Colonial. And 1777 states that you can't do that. So I hope that everyone looks at 1777 real good. And it says the buffer will be provided by establishing a new residential rear lot line, which would average 75 feet of the existing property line. The buffer area will be utilized for additional drainage ponds, storm storage, walking paths, and public uses where applicable. It will not contain rear driveways with access on the Colonial Club Drive. A buffer on Glenwood side of the proposed residential area will also be provided by establishing a new residential rear lot line, which would be 35 feet. The new property line will be defined by a uniform wall surrounding the property. The wall will be made of high quality materials such as masonry and cannot be made of wood, vinyl, or chain link. So Mr. Schmidt said a lot of really important things and so did Sue Benton. However, my thing is that from the very beginning, if you look at the master plan that Steve Villavasso prepared, Steve Villavasso said, and he provided the master plan. I think all of you have it. And it showed a 75 foot buffer all the way down Colonial. That was the intent, that's what was meant, and that's what should be. And anything other than that, since they got their 15 feet, I mean, 15 acres of a uh, commercial C1 in the front, they would have given up anything to get the commercial in the front. Now they say the commercial is not worth anything. They can't give it away. I'll take it. And whatever I get for the property, I'll donate to the city. Thank you. All right, Nicole, you're mute. Okay. Any, any other hands, Nicole? Yep, got it. Um, right. Yeah, it was just public comment on the ordinance. So, council. Okay, that any other hands? Nope, no other hands. Okay, public hearing is now closed and we'll go into council discussion. Okay, Councilman Asbill. So, I intend to, uh, so I got a request from the developer owner to defer this ordinance. So I'm going to do that, but I got to address a couple things that I heard um, that I heard first, uh, just because they can't go on being said when they're just not true. Uh, first, I want to address a concern that Mr. Maurizio had regarding the MOU. And yes, MOUs are used in the private world all the time, and he's correct, they are. Uh, however, when it comes to council action, an MOU who's signed by a mayor unilaterally cannot overturn an ordinance that was pass by a city council. So that's where the distinction is there. Although the MOU, yes, I mean, we should honor it as much as we can perhaps, but uh, it, is not, it is not legally binding to this council because uh, to overturn council action, in this case, 1777, we'd have to have further council action to overturn that. Uh, and then a couple of things uh, that Ms. Benton said, 
that the the city's kind of rolling over to give this developer whatever they want. And unfortunately, that's simply that's simply not true either. The only thing this city has done uh, on this property is to ratify a, a um, to ratify a um, to ratify a decision that the previous council, which she served on, had made. So that council agreed to those eight lots up front, and that's the only thing we've done on this property at all. Uh, and, you know, just to say that there haven't been traffic studies, there haven't been drainage studies and all this other stuff, there have been. Uh, in fact, I, I sent an email today requesting them, and they were done back in 2019 and 2018 by uh, Design Development Group and and um, another another firm. So, you know, if, if you want those things, that's great. If you haven't seen them, that's fine too. But don't say they don't exist because they do. Come into City Hall and get a copy of them so you can review them before you say that. Uh, that's all I have. There's If there's no other discussion, I'll have a motion to defer, but I'll withhold that motion until there's any other discussion. Any other council discussion? Councilman Chatterley? I was heavily involved in 1777. 1777 states, no houses on Colonial Club Drive. 1777 states, no more than 76 houses in the 40, in the 40 acres. The master plan that went with 1777 had two exits on the Colonial Club Drive. Harahan Oaks has probably 130 houses, one exit on the Colonial Club Drive. I don't see a problem. I live there, drive past it numerous times a day. Don't see a problem with them coming out on the Colonial Club Drive. Two doors down from me, my neighbors have a house, their bedroom window, drive down 7th Street, you're going straight into their bedroom. They've never complained, never once complained about it. Um, there has to be an exit entrance into the subdivision. Um, I, I'm very aware what 1777 says. Um, I'll follow the rules. Um, there's a motion on the floor to defer this ordinance here, and uh, I'll second it. And uh, I'll have discussions with anyone who would like to have discussions whenever they'd like to have discussion. Thank you. Any other council discussion? Mr. Tom, you're muted. Mr. Tom, Thank you, Jason. I have I have comments. But uh, if we're deferring, uh, I'm assuming the vote to defer will pass. So I'll defer my comments until it comes up again at another council meeting. Okay, so Councilman Johnson, anything? Any comments? Councilman Willie, you good? I'm good. Okay, uh, we have a motion on the floor by Councilman Asbill to defer, second by Councilman Johnston. I'm second by Councilman Chatelaine, all in favor? Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Five yeas, zero nays. Um, ordinance 2020-25 is deferred to the regularly scheduled January meeting. Proposed ordinance number 2020-26. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asville and seconded by Councilman. Who would like to second this one? Gary Tucker, she's just on mute. I'll take it. I'm sorry. In ordinance approving the preliminary resubdivision plat of lot A two B one A, Soniat or Chapitulas Plantation subdivision, City of Harahan, Parish of Jefferson, State of Louisiana, and the creation of private streets, drainage, sewer, utility, and other servitudes into lots one through thirty four. Colonial Place, Phase 2, the Cody Lane and McCarran Avenue, which are private streets. Colonial Place, Phase 2, and Lot A2B, A2B1B, Tony Adder Chapitulas Plantation, all pursuant to a plan made by Ronald Clement, PLS, dated October 1st, 2020. Okay, public hearing is now open. Okay, let me, uh... all right, Danny, Danny you there? Yeah, hey guys, let me try to turn my video on. Can y'all hear me? Yes, yes. Can you see me?
Nicole, would we be able to turn this video on or? I mean, we usually we usually don't, but if you want to, we can. It's, it's up to it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'd I'd prefer it. I uh I got to watch my own mouth move. All okay. right, go ahead. You there, huh? There you yeah. Go. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Nicole. Uh, good evening. My name is Danny McCarran. I'm the owner developer uh, representative of JW Colonial. This application was filed on the city or with the city on October 1st, 2020, and has now been pending for 11 weeks. This 34 lot parcel is subject to the limited residential development restrictions of the current development agreement. It is within the 40 acre parcel. As you can see, there are no lots fronting along Colonial. Likewise, a buffer of more than 75 foot is provided along Colonial Club Drive. Additionally, these 34 lots will count against the permitted maximum of 76 homes within the 40 acres. This, this request is for preliminary plat approval only. Again, all minimum code requirements are satisfied and all of the same city protections are already built into the ordinance. This resubdivision will be subject to an additional conditional plat approval. Your preliminary approval tonight will permit our engineers to move forward with detailed plans for streets, utilities, and other infrastructure construction design. These detailed plans will be subject to additional review by both the outside city engineer, a city personnel, planning and zoning, and this council. I believe this ordinance uh, did have a unanimous yay vote at the planning and zoning. Um, the approval of these new 34 lots will result in an economic development and new tax revenues for the city. It will attract high quality homeowners, which shall only serve to strengthen the Harahan community. And we do respectfully request your approval. Uh, that's my, that's my uh, reading off of something answers and now I'll go into my I'll try to address the comments I assume that were made that on on lot six that uh, would refer to this as well and and I want to first start by saying look I and, and I'm really speaking to those folks on colonial clearly at this point they've now um, determined to have an attorney involved and I get it and and, I, and I'll, I'm, I I want to say I truly understand um, I can appreciate your feelings. I think if I grew up or lived or owned a property across from a country club, I would want it to remain a country club. Of course I would. If I, if I had property facing wide open green space, I would of course want to remain wide open green space. <clears throat> but Harahan does not consist of simply the homes on Colonial Club. And that indeed is private land across the street. Um, I've said it before, I'll say it again. I still want to be a good neighbor. I continue. I've said that every time. I continue and still want to be a good neighbor. I'm going to address a few of the points that were brought up. Number one, uh, drainage. Drainage has indeed been addressed. A very high dollar drainage plan has been uh, performed prior to me boarding in, uh, which I believe is, I believe it's at City Hall. Uh, with regarding the sewer, I want to point out that once this, once this, uh, in, look, anybody can do this math. You can follow along at home. Uh, if you look at the number of homes that are being introduced into the subdivision, and I'm not just speaking of the 34, I'm speaking of when fully developed, you're going to realize an impact in number of homes to Harahan of approximately 1.8 to 2.3%. And while yes, Harahan does have some sewer issues, we're not talking about adding uh, 25, 30, we're talking about 1.8 to 2.3% when fully developed, at which point I believe is going to be quite a few years from now. Furthermore, Harahan recently took uh, the liberty to address that situation by introducing and passing a sewer impact fee and to where every, every home on this new subdivision, as well as any other home uh, built or renovated in Harahan is gonna recognize uh, sewer impact fees to aid in just that. Should it have been done many, many years ago? Probably, um, but here you go. It's here now um, before the first house is, is uh, done. Um, if, if you can, again, you can do that math, you can add up those homes out there. And I think you're going to recognize that Harahan's going to sewer impact fees between 500,000 and a million dollars on that alone. 
uh, guarding the safety of the streets and people uh, walking in uh, you know, the street. I, I do want to point out, if you look at the, 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 even the preliminary uh, plan in there, it does call once the, it, it does call for us to install a, a sidewalk. It actually an oversized sidewalk running along the colonial properties up to the entrance of this. Um, I even want to adjust, address the width of uh, the, the, the street. First off, I've come to find out that is not a Harahan Street. Uh, Colonial is a Jefferson Parish Street. Mr. Mayor, I'll motion for an additional three minutes. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Asbill, second by? Second. Councilman Chatelain, give it to Mr. Uh, McCarran three more minutes. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Bye. Yay. Good news, Mr. McCarran, continue. Thank you all, guys. Um, not only am I not against widening it, I've already reached out to Jefferson Parish to understand would they be opposed to widening? Would they consider widening it? Uh, and again, I'm, my guess is that those same folks on the other side of Colonial probably aren't too keen about widening it on their side. Fine, I'll take it on my side. Um, I've already reached out to Jefferson Parish. I've even offered to, uh, to, cost, uh, to have some cost sharing on that. Um, regarding though, the width of it and the traffic, there is, uh, as, as Councilman Chatelaine said, Harahan Oaks is a division that's on Colonial that has over 130 homes coming in and out of one entrance. I used to live there. Um, I can never attest to a traffic backup at Harahan Oaks as long as I've lived there or since I've lived there. Uh, it's just not a real thing. I know that when people say it with certain inflections, it can sound big. When you say, oh, we can't, 76 more homes, it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot. And, and it feels like it when you hear the, but facts are facts. Harahan Oaks right up the road has 130 homes coming out of one entrance on the exact same road we're talking about. Um, I do wanna address also, I can't remember who made a comment that there's no underground drainage on that street. There is indeed underground drainage on the street. Um, I'm happy to meet whoever that is. Um, on site and show them exactly where that drainage is. Um, um, and regarding the comment, I uh, believe um, Mr. Schmidt made about this being premature. Boy, if there's one thing I have to respectfully disagree with, this ain't premature. I, uh, I attended the first meeting just as a citizen over, gosh, it must've been seven, eight years ago, uh, sitting in the Harahan gym, just as a citizen, listening to the developers at the time um, followed it the whole way. Um, it's, it's, if, the, if it's anything, it might be a lot of things. It's not premature. It's long overdue. Uh, I believe the longer a development like this sits gaining debt, gaining debt, gaining debt, what you end up with is a, is a, is a less enticing product, not a better product. Um, yeah. And that's, uh, and that's it. And I guess I should formally, I know Dane offered to take the land up up front at no cost for free and turn around and donate those proceeds back to the city. I'll respectfully decline the offer, but <laughs> I do appreciate the offer of uh, zero dollars. <laughs> um, and that's it guys. I appreciate it. Um, I, I'm happy to still address anything and for whatever it's worth, I realize that I don't have any say on how some, how long someone gets to speak, but to the degree, I want everybody to know, I, I don't, it, wished even the other sides didn't have these time limitations because I'd prefer to hear everyone's comments on them. Anyway, thank you very much. I'll uh, mute myself. Aaron, just got one question for you. Yeah. An another concern of people is uh, the sewer part. Uh, what is the, the capabilities of the sewer tying into? Can you yeah, delve so, into that? Sure. Yeah. So the sewer of the 34 lots, a couple things there. One is we have as a JW Colonial, and then th th there is a brand new completely paid for by the developer lift station located at approximately the corner of Colonial and Jefferson Highway that is uh, is sitting there waiting on capacity, waiting on this project to start. So that part is in, it's tied in under, it hits Wilson. I believe Wilson is currently, and I'll allow council people to speak to that, but I did see it, that it was released for bid. So I presume that's getting done. And look, look uh, Councilman Johnston, that is where the, uh, you know, I think those impact fees, I think y'all were wise. I think I, I spoke at it at the time. Do I feel a little slighted that <laughs> the first, probably the first 10 homes that are built are going to be absorbed impact fee by me? Okay. But, you know, I think that half a million to a million on that is going to go a long way. And um, 
I'm willing to do whatever else I can there. And, and again, I want to point out, we're only talking about approximately a 2% increase in, in, uh, in homes to Harahan's current capacity. Thank you. And, and I guess, I, and I guess while we're saying that, Craig, I, I'll, I've said this before, so I'll say it again, just to, to underline any, uh, to make sure there's no loose ends. I've offered it before, I'm still offering it. Should the city for some reason decide that they do not want this development on the sewers city, on the city's sewer system? I've said it before, I'll repeat it again. Um, I'm not against building my own plant on site, uh, a temporary treatment plant. These things are not as intrusive as one may believe. Um, the nicest subdivision, in my opinion, in Baton Rouge, Country Club of Baton Rouge has, a, has, a, uh, has an on-site plant. Nearly every subdivision on the North Shore has them. Um, I've gone and personally looked at three of them. When it, this is all due diligence I did before getting into the project. I've been into to three of them in Baton Rouge to, to understand how they work, do they smell, how big they are. And um, we're really talking about something that sits on a piece of property that's approximately, I believe it's 40 foot by 80 foot at ground level. Everything's underground other than the blower. It's, uh, and, and with the, uh, with the, um, the pond, the, the, the stormwater detention area, um, I've already met with, uh, is it DEP, regarding that prop property. Would that make for a good uh, exit? And it would indeed. All that said, Craig, I, I just say all that to say, I'm still willing to do that. However, I do think y'all addressed it when y'all put the impact fees, you know, Any other council discussion? Still on, still on, on, it's still on comment. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, Justin Schmidt wanted to speak. Was Danny finished? I accident I accidentally muted him. We're still on public comment, correct? Public comments. All right, Justin Schmidt would like to speak. Thank you. Um, I I don't want to address Mr. McCarran directly, but I will. Um, I will say this, as, as I spoke to his attorney on Friday, I, I've been doing this long enough and doing it on the developer side long enough to know that this development is going to happen. And I've made that clear to my, my clients. Um, there will be a development, there will be houses built, there will be a lot of houses built. I think, as I said earlier, we, we were just asking to pump the brakes here and let everyone get a chance to be comfortable with what's going on and what we're looking at. And I think this, the, the, you know, the, the deferral on the first one, the first ordinance, hopefully that will lead to a deferral on this one as, as I see them as a package deal, perhaps y'all don't, but um, I think that'll give us the time to earnestly work together and sit down and figure some things out. You know, as I explained to, to Mr. McCarran's attorney, North Carolina, I love being in the mountains of North Carolina around the Highlands and, and Cashers area because you can drive down a country road filled with trees and, and drive behind, you know, pull behind a, a hedge and, and there's a 300 home subdivision there that you never knew existed. Uh, I'm not suggesting that that's going to happen here, but there are things that can be done to the entrance and there are things that can be done like with the fencing. Um, that can remediate or um, minimize some of the impact that will come here. And I think that's really what, what I think the neighbors want to look at. Um, they want to just make sure that there are some plans. And in all honesty, I think they would like, you know, it, it, you know a commitment because there was a commitment before. And I'm, you know, back to something Mr. Francesca said, I, Y'all can't see it because you don't have the cameras on, but I, I took that MOU and I, and I, I took a red pen and a, and a blue pen. And it's like, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. It's like, here we have owners shall file an application and then in blue, as soon as reasonable. You know, the owner shall not proceed until reasonable effort has been made. You know, it's like, yeah, there's a bunch of prohibitions in here, but, you know, owner and his successors shall only to the extent it's economically feasible. You know, that's, that's development and I get it. Uh, I think we're just looking 
for some um, reasonable concessions that can give some peace of mind to these neighbors that have been living here. And, and yes, they're, they're living here, but, but there are some legitimate concerns. Taking over a whole golf course and building things on it, it is going to create stormwater issues. There's no doubt about it. You are putting concrete where there once was grass. By we'll definition, additional three minutes for Mr. Schmidt. There will be issues. Okay. So I, I don't need to belabor the point. I just I, I want to express my and my client's uh, willingness to work, you know, with Ms. McKernan and his attorney. In fact, his, his, his attorney has been referring clients to me for 20 years, and he calls me when he's got issues. So uh, it, this is not an issue where um, I don't think there can be some meaningful discussion and cooperation getting here. Uh, we just need a little bit more time. And so uh, I, I'd hope that the council will consider uh, deferring this um, particular docket as they did with the uh, 2025. Thank you. Okay, are we gonna close? Public hearing is now closed. Wait, we have- Oh. oh. Yeah, Ms. Judy Jones. I'm sorry, Ms. Judy, I can't see the hand. And you said. Um, back when, in 2014, we had a town hall meeting at the gym for this. I think we need another one. We have 19 people watching this meeting. Not everybody can do this on computer. We need to get this plan and all the plans that they say are at City Hall out there for people to look at and see. Maybe they'll be more attainable to do this if they saw the plans themselves. Couldn't y'all schedule one in, the, in January? Sometime, I mean, we can do uh, the spacing with, in, at the gym with no problem. Got an answer for I I'd, like, I'd like to answer it, Miss Judy. We've been dealing with this since 2014. You just said it. The people who were involved have spoke their piece, said what they had to say. Um, I think everybody knows where everybody stands on different issues. And I believe we're addressing a lot of them. And I don't, I don't feel it's time. I mean, I think if we follow 1777, we move forward. But I, I appreciate your comment. Okay, we have Dane Doucette. Let me unmute him. One hundred percent about following seventeen seventy seven, stepping back a little bit, and let's see what's going to happen. I think if you read seventeen seventy seven, there's some flaws in it, and there's some really strong teeth in it, and the teeth in it my opinion is that there shall be a buffer and a setback of open space on Colonial Club Drive. The buffer will be provided by establishing a new residential rear lot line, which would average 75 feet of the existing property line. I mean, it's just plain as day, guys. The buffer area will be utilized for additional drainage ponds, storm storage, walking paths, a document picture of meandering walking path connecting from the eight lots in the front and meandering all the way through back to Club Drive. And it says in public uses where applicable, it will not contain rear driveways with access on the Colonial Club Drive. So, I, you know, let's not go on the Glenwood side. The Glenwood side, they have a 35 foot buffer and no one's saying, oh, let's get rid of that 35 foot buffer. But all of a sudden, Certain people are saying, let's get rid of the 75 foot buffer on Colonial. And some people are going to say, no, they're not saying that. They and just want six lots. They just want six lots and they want 34 lots. But what I heard the other night, Mr. Degote said, is that I would like a 150 foot buffer instead of a 75 foot buffer. And Mr. Degote is not the most wonderful, benevolent person in the world. He's not giving up another 75 feet because he's Mr. Wonderful. He's given up another 75 feet. And I never said Danny McCarran. I think Danny McCarran's a fine young man. But Mr. Cody and Danny McCarran want another 75 feet. They had to give up 150 feet. Mr. Benevolent, all the way down Colonial. Why? Because the first eight lots are 150 feet deep. The next six lots are 150 feet deep. 
and the next 17 lots are 150 feet deep. And they know if we don't get it today, we're going to get it one day. They know exactly what they're doing. And I agree with Mr. Schmidt. We need to sit back and watch what happens. All right, we have David Trepanier Jr. Uh, actually, it's Sue Benton again. Um, I, I guess I would just like to ask the, or just say to the developer, he has a blank slate. It's a huge piece of property. I, I, I just don't understand why he has to put that driveway right there and why he wants to have all that traffic dumped onto our street. And I, I, again, I just feel like he, that we should be given some consideration. It's a blank slate. You could easily put a drive, a, 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 an entrance over off of um, Jefferson Highway. And, and, and what Dane said about the 150 feet is so true because when they took the, uh, the, 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 the land for the nine houses um, at the front of Colonial, we moved the, bo the borders or the boundaries of the property to make up for that for the owner. So yeah, Mr. Ducote's not giving us uh, an extra uh, 75 feet without taking it from somewhere else. That's not his plan. Uh, I just implore the developer to please consider the residents who, you know, we've lived in these homes, we've renovated them, our, we've raised our families here. It's going to change it completely, and it's not necessary. You can put an, a, an entrance off of Jefferson Highway. Um, I, I, I just, I just, you know, you said you want to be a good neighbor. You know, talk to us, and you know, we know it's going to be developed. We're not fighting that it's, you know, that it can't be developed. We just want it done in a way that it least impacts us, and we should be considered because we've been here. The longest and we bought these properties you know not ever thinking that this was going to happen which you know it has and we have to deal with it but you know work with us and and make it something more palatable to us thank you oh. go you on mute uh, I'm sorry. I think that's everyone. Uh, I don't see any more hands raised. Okay. Public hearing is now closed. Council discussion. Council uh, guys, I believe Miss Judy said 19 people are watching this meeting. If I had to guess, all 19 of them have read 1777. 1777 states no more than 76 homes on the 40 acres. 1777 states, no houses facing Colonial Club Drive. The plat plan that went with 1777 had a 75 foot buffer and I believe a 35 foot buffer on Glenwood side. 75 on Colonial, 35 foot buffer on Glenwood side. I believe we're following 1777. If they want to give a 150 foot buffer on Colonial Club side, so be. They can't come back unless they get the whole council to agree. I don't plan on going anywhere. As long as I'm involved, I'm going to vote no for houses on Colonial Club Drive. I think we have something with 1777. I worked on 1777 for a long time. Um, and most of y'all know that. I feel confident with the developer we have. People say, let's hold up, let's hold up. I'm looking at 1777. It was signed in September of 2014. I mean, we've been working on this all that time. No one's ever stopped. You had three different administrations. I believe all three administrations worked on this Colonial Country Club project. I'm ready to move forward with the lots inside Colonial Country Club. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Comments? Okay. Uh, yeah, just I, uh, oh, go ahead, Jason. Go ahead, Councilman Esbo. Okay, just a few um, things I want to point out to the council. First of all, this is preliminary approval. Um, and I wanted to point out that in the one, two, three, third whereas paragraph and the section one and a couple of other sections, and also on the, in the second page of the plat plan, 
the developer and the developer's attorney did include the same language that we asked them to include on the eight lots that we approved up front. Um, not only did they include that language, substituting all the lots for the original lots in 1777 to make sure that 17, 1777 does not become obsolete, they also included language in there that would prohibit them uh, from resubdividing these 34 lots into smaller lots. So they're stuck on these 34 lots if we approve this today. Uh, then I want to address a couple of other things. Look, that, that, that was said in the public. Um, first of all, is the traffic. And I think the point has been made about traffic, you know, uh, comp in comparison to Harahan Oaks. But I, I think I've got another comparison is at one time, that country club was a bustling country club. People were in and out of there on a daily basis throughout the day. There was no complaints of traffic then, none whatsoever that I recall. Um, and the other thing I want to say is it goes to Mr. Mr. Doucette's and Mr. Schmidt's points regarding the, the average of 75 feet. Um, and, and it does say in the development agreement, if you, if you look closely, it says an average. Uh, so in theory, you know, they could develop half of those lots at zero feet and the other half at 150 feet. So, uh, so I mean, and look, I don't yeah, think sure. I don't I don't think for one second that if if a developer wants to come in and, and exceed the expectations or the requirements that we make them go back down. For example, if Councilman Chatelaine was developing a lot and he wanted to, and he's required to do a six foot side yard, but he wanted to do a 20 foot side yard. We can't go to him and say, oh, no, you have to do six. I think that would be silly to do. And I think it's silly to make them go down to 75 here. But when it comes to time that they want to build on Colonial, we've got to hold their feet to the fire and say, sorry, you wasted that extra 75. Uh, I think that's what we've got to do here. And, um, you know, I, and I just want to, I want to say it again, this is preliminary approval. They're coming back. I do have a question for the developer, um, Madam Clerk, if we can ask him to come back up. Is he still here? Yeah, um, you should be able to hear me, Jay. Yeah, I hear you. Thanks, Danny. So I'm looking on the on the on the drawing here on the Glenwood side. Um, when it comes for conditional approval, are we going to be showing, are we going to be showing a portion of a wall there or something on the Glenwood side, like like is required in 1777? Yes, sir. Yep. No, we're okay. gonna we're gonna show not only that, but we're gonna show that setback and and then I guess just because we're talking about Glenwood I'll even bring up um we've actually also been in touch I don't know if anybody from Glenwood is in the audience but in in case they are um almost immediately reached out to Jefferson Parish and and uh, uh Mr. Bonanno about getting them back on the uh I believe before this last election they had talked about whether it be to uh, close in that back ditch or to widen it but but and, and in that discussion, they expressed to us that some of the things they may want to do in the future may include even a wider servitude than what we had. And I, I just wanted to say that we're we're we we're open to that if it's if it makes drainage better, if it makes things better. So uh, on that Glenwood side, yes, we will. Okay. And on your entrance, um, that's on Colonial Club Glide. I mean, are you willing to work with the neighbors when you when you come with your next? drawing are you willing to work with the neighbors on sweeping that more or setting it back a little bit and I, I know we've talked about it I just want you to say it because I think the public sure. is here that you are right sure I absolutely am um not only am I willing I actually before finding out that uh Mr. Trepanier and I forgot I forget his neighbor's name Dr. Shaw left. yeah Dr. Shaw I actually went and personally knocked on both of their doors gosh, probably a week after the planning and zoning meeting because they both wanted to talk to me about that. Um, I believe Mr. Trevanya wasn't home. I saw his daughter there, asked her to have him call me and um, had reached out to him uh, via phone call. And uh, uh, To the point I'm making there is not only am I now willing, I'm not only simply willing because I'm getting a tongue lashing. I was already willing. I'm still willing. Uh, at some point, um, <laughs> I some point it's it's too far down the line but yes absolutely if that's sweeping that um doesn't mean we're going to make everybody happy uh right. ultimately those lights are going to turn and um there's only so much you can do but uh yes to answer that question i certainly am good thank you 
Uh, no further comments from me. Thank you. All right, Councilman Buddy. Uh, I agree that we need to proceed in accordance with 1777 unless we amend it. And I know there's been some efforts by the developer, good faith efforts by the developer in the city to do that. And they uh, were not successful in terms of uh, amending the development agreement and coming to an agreement on this for moving forward. So the development agreement as it stands today, it, in 3B, talks about 40 acres to be determined. It's never been done. It's a moving target. Where's the 40 acres? So, and it's not up to the developer to determine that. And it's not up to the city to determine that. It needs to be determined. So the 40 acres determines the development on Colonial. It's, it's all linked. So it's, it's an ambiguity that needs to be resolved in order to live, comply with the development agreement. And I'd suggest we do it before we approve any plans to build lots. Moving along, 5C talks about no lots on Colonial. Now, going back to the previous ordinance, which has been deferred, developers taking it upon themselves to say that those lots in the ordinance that we deferred are not part of the 40 acres. It's not their so called to determine that. If it's part of 40 acres, then you can't build houses on Colonial there. Moving along, 5D1 talks about a, bush, a buffer the buffer will be provided by establishing a new residential rear lot line, which would average 75 feet inside of the existing property line. That line needs to be established, needs to be put on this uh, architect, I'm sorry, surveyor's plan because it's a moving target. It's, it's, house, it's housekeeping. These are issues that should be addressed in terms of us understanding what this development's gonna look like. And again, who establishes those that lot? It, first of all, it needs to be established, period, it needs to be done. And it needs, there needs to be a joint agreement. And I agree with Councilman S. Bill, it's an average. But if we're gonna vote on this development, we need to see it and it needs to be established, meaning it needs to be drawn in to the plan and established with the green space, sidewalks, the things that the development agreement discusses. Uh, 5D2 talks about the buffer being utilized for the additional drainage, storm storage, walking paths. Again, these things should be disclosed on a plan. What, what is it gonna look like when houses are built? Um, uh, back to the 150 foot setback that we're looking at right now. The development agreement requires 75 feet. It'll never, if it's, if it's plotted that way, it'll more than likely never be developed in the future because they won't be deep enough conceivable that a future council could let you build wide lots, uh, but only 75 feet deep, conceivable. And what we have right now with a proposed 150 foot setback, it's obvious, well, in my opinion, and I'm gonna repeat what someone else has said tonight, is the developer is gonna come back later to put lots fronting on Colonial. And if this council approves this, our failure to housekeep and, and define that buffer on Colonial will ultimately result in, in the potential of lots being built on Colonial. If this council wants to build lots on Colonial, once that is an, is an ultimate outcome or a potential outcome, well, let's just amend 1777 and remove the prohibition of lots on Colonial instead of kicking that can down the road. If, if we go with the 150 now, 
1777 is upheld by future councils, that's going to leave the owner with a strip of property behind the 75 foot average buffer, which will average 75 feet by 850 feet. It's a pretty odd size lot. It'll have ingress and egress from both ends. So if the city, if the council really believes that that 75 foot buffer is going to be a reality in perpetuity, that's gonna leave the developer with an 850 foot long, 75 foot deep lot with, with the potential of ingressing and egressing from two side streets meaning you could have a 425 foot lot, 75 feet wide. It, 1777 requires the creation of a buffer. And before we get into the interior design, I think the exterior property line buffer should be uh, documented, agreed upon, incorporated into the plan. Uh, again, the 35 foot setback on Glenwood um, in paragraph, what is it, 5E, is not shown on this plan. It should be, it's required by the development agreement. And unless we're going to amend the development agreement, it ought to be on this plan. Um, at, back to Councilman Esbill's comment, and this is a question, a recurring question in my mind and to Mr. McCarran. This is only a preliminary approval, but I'm gonna put to everybody that once this council gives preliminary approval for this, if the, con if the developer comes back with streets and sewerage and, and, the, and meets the other requirements of the Harahan Building Code, the council cannot refuse the next phase and the phase after that. So this is approval effectively for what's proposed today. The council will have no basis to, to, the, to um, prevent the construction of this so long as the developer puts forth a plan in accordance with the best business uh, building practices and, they, and it meets the city's code. This, so it's really final approval. And the only way it doesn't become final is if the developer fails to do what a developer has to do. Um, there's also in uh, paragraph D, I mean E, I'm sorry, a discussion about a uniform wall, a high quality, they use the um, example of masonry wall surrounding the property, it's the entire property. I, I don't see it on here. And and you don't have to wait. Excuse me, Mr. Buddy. Yes. Excuse me one second. If, you, if you're going to read that, read the whole thing where it says the wall must be made of high quality material, such as masonry, cannot right. be made of wood, vinyl, or chain link. Councilman, I say, agree 100%. Let's just not I, say I masonry. Said, no, I said such as, I thought. But you're yeah, correct. But, you but, but my point you. is, my point is, Councilman, it, it's not shown on the drawing. Where's the wall going to be? And what's it going to be made of? I don't want to say what it's going to be made. That's not for us to do it. It's for us to consider whether the proposed wall in the proposed location complies with the development agreement. I that agree. It needs to be made of. So those things are lacking. So what we're doing here again, this council is doing what previous councils have done, is we're taking a piecemeal approach to a project in matters where simply live with the document, comply with these issues, and then propose your lots. So for those reasons, I, I'm gonna vote no. I'm gonna recommend that everybody else vote no. And, and of course, each councilman's gonna make up their own mind for their own reasons after consideration. Uh, paragraph 6A, I haven't, seen a report from the city's engineer saying this drainage plan is sufficient. And 1777 says 
we need that. We need their engineer and our engineer say this drainage plan is sufficient. Now I've got serious questions about the drainage plan. The proposed lots in, in on Colonial, the six additional lots, I think it is, that we have deferred are on property that was originally envisioned to be part of the detention pond. I haven't seen the drainage plan. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has, but I, I am I am of under the impression that the city engineer hasn't approved the final drainage plan. That's a big deal. Um, paragraph 6B says that uh, property rights will be established, uh, as I understand 6B, meaning that the commercial property owner is going to be responsible for maintaining the drainage pond, the ten detention pond. I haven't seen that. I don't know if it exists. And that there's going to be perpetual drainage servitudes. I don't see a perpetual drainage servitudes on these plans that we're getting ready to approve. Um, so, and 9F talks about developing plans for maintenance of the stormwater detention. I haven't seen plan to, to maintain that in perpetuity. So again, we have an agreement and I'll agree with, with Maurizio. This is a binding agreement. 1777 is a binding agreement and the parties have obligations. So if the parties perform their obligations, the developer gets to develop. I agree also this property will be developed. I think it ought to be developed in accordance with 1777. Those are just some of the issues that I reviewed this afternoon. So I'll uh, I'll uh, give others the opportunity to comment. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna take it from here. Um, maybe it's just I always assume, Mr. Tommy, like you were saying, the 40 acres. I always assume or I was told that it was commercial, then it was the 40, then it was whatever after that. And uh, that was supposed to be the 40. <clears throat> and that's what I was always told, whether it was set in stone or not, I'm, I can't 100% agree with that or not. Uh, secondly, as far as the entrance goes, I know it's been brought up before about, uh, well, recently about coming in and leaving from Colonial Club Drive. But I know as far as I've been counsel, I don't know how what it was beforehand, but since I've been counsel, every time we have talked to the developers, it was always an entrance and exit on Colonial. It was never about Jefferson Highway. I never heard anything about Jefferson Highway. It was always Colonial, and that's been six years I've been on the board, and throughout all that time, it, it's been that way. Uh, third, at this, meet, at this last zoning meeting, you have people on both sides of the, of the spectrum on, on this whole Colonial thing, and for this ordinance itself, it was unanimous to, to approve it. Um, I mean, it, it says a lot right there when you have people that are on both sides of the spectrum and they all agree that it should be approved. Uh, lastly, about the concrete wall, I'm looking a little closer at the, at the sketch that's on here, a plat, I don't know what you call it. But uh, if you look close to the entrance, they have a little arrow pointing at a double line and it says concrete and in parentheses, it says typical. So I don't know, I got, I'm, I'm assuming that's the wall because it goes all the way, the whole property. That's all. I, I, don't, I don't mind deferring because I know they have a lot of questions and stuff like that, but th that's just my assumption, seeing that with the zoning board's uh, uh, you know, um, opinion. That's all. Councilman Wheeler, would you like to say something? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay, so I, I have a, um, I'd like to see if you guys, um, I know you guys brought up a lot of questions and a lot of important points. Um, I don't know if it's uh, totally up to you guys, but uh, Danny McCarran would like to speak back on some of the points that were brought up. I don't normally like doing this, but this is such a, a topic of interest and very important, um, and it's up to you guys. I, I have no problem. I don't think we should, because then that opens the floodgates for everybody else to come speak in. I don't want to set that precedent, to be honest. Okay. All right. Well, then let's call. You want to call for the vote? I call, proceed with the vote. Okay. 
I'll buy it. So, um, I have an iron. So the, this is an ordinance proposed by Councilman Asbill, seconded by Councilman Wheeler. It's proposed ordinance 2020-26. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Okay. Four yeas, all opposed? Yay. So four yeas, one nay. Ordinance passes. Madam Clerk. All right, proposed ordinance number 2020-27. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Wheeler and seconded by Councilman. This is the 2021 budget. Who would like to second this one? Councilman Johnson, do you want to second that? No? Sure. All right, Councilman Johnson will second. Johnson, all right. Is an ordinance adopting the annual budget of, re of revenue and expenditures for the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2021 for the city of Harahan, Louisiana. Okay, the public hearing is now open. Anyone, Nicole? Hey, Mayor, sorry, I muted myself. Um, this is the ordinance that we're not voting on tonight. This is the proposed budget that we're going to be talking about it that he will adopt at the 28th meeting and will be taken up in discussion on the budget hearing on the 22nd. Okay. I think Nicole, the Madam Clerk, just wanted to put it on the agenda so people that would see it would realize it would be coming up on the 28th. Okay. Yep. Madam, Madam Clerk, that is correct, right? Correct. Yes. So we won't have the, um, I mean, the vote. We don't have to open for public hearing. We just want to make sure that we inform everyone that will be this. This will be on the agenda coming up on December twenty eighth. Correct, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Okay. Next. Wait, so are we gonna? Y'all gonna defer it or? Yeah, move to defer. Okay, motion by Councilman Asbill, second by Councilman Wheeler to defer. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Motion is deferred. The ordinance is deferred. Okay. All right, Madam Clerk, ordinances for introduction. Uh, ordinances for introduction, proposed ordinance number 2020-28. The following ordinance was proposed by Councilman Asbill, an ordinance amending the Harahan Code of Ordinances by the addition of Article 2, let's see, fire watch and standby details, section 34-10 through 34-16 through 34 fire prevention and protection to set policies for fire watch and associated pay rates and fees for fire watch service. And proposed ordinance number 2020-29, the following ordinance is proposed by Councilman Hansel, an ordinance amending the Harahan Code of Ordinances by the addition of Article 9, false alarms, section 58 through 90, through 58 through 99 to chapter 58, nuisances, to declare repeated false fire and or emergency alarms nuisances and to set penalties for repeated false alarms. Old business. Removal and temporary appointment of city magistrate. Uh, we would like to uh, we have a deferral. Move, on. move to defer. Councilman Asbill moves to defer. Second. All in favor? Yeah. 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 Who seconded that? Councilman Johnson, do we need to open that for to a, to a vote before we finalize the? I mean, open it to the public before we finalize the vote. City Attorney. All right, so let's open that to public hearing before we finalize this vote. Anyone like to speak on removal um, and temporary appointment of a city magistrate? Any hands, Madam Clerk? Yes, sir. No hands. Okay, public hearing is now closed. Now we have a motion on the floor by Councilman Asville, second by Councilman Johnston to defer. All in favor? Yay. Yay. Is that five yeas, zero nays? Old business is deferred. Okay, new business. New business number one, Todd Tunion, finance director, monthly financials with budget to actual comparisons. Hello, this is Todd. Nicole, maybe if you, if you can, Fix my video if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, just a couple thoughts. We wanted to provide an update that the finance team, uh, there we go, that the finance team has been impacted by the city hall closure. 
uh, as well as COVID-19. So we continue to uh, pay the bills and, and do the work that we need to, but we have been impacted you know, by the closure of City Hall. Uh, a couple of comments on the financials actual to, to budget. The city's fortunate in that we continue to see sales tax revenues uh, to be higher than what we forecasted and higher than budget, uh, not by huge dollars, but, uh, uh, but the actual amounts being greater than budget and, and, it, and in line with the amounts that we saw pre-COVID. Uh, so that's good news for the city on the, on the revenue side. We do continue to forecast for the 2020 year uh, <clears throat> that, uh, that we will see an increase in net assets in the general fund and the city's financial statements. Uh, so we continue to see that. And we're, we're working on closing out the year at December 31st over the next few weeks and months. Um, we've had initial planning conversations with the city's external auditors, uh, provided limited documentation to them to date. Uh, but working on the schedule and timing for the audit in the 2021 year. Uh, <clears throat> two other comments. The uh, uh, city currently is uh, receiving the bulk of the property tax receipts, uh, or property tax payments that the city hall staff are working on processing, uh, keeping, keeping the team active in that area. And then lastly, uh, as uh, the council members mentioned just a few minutes ago, we're we're scheduled for the budget hearing, uh, so I believe next week or the next week or two uh, to approve the 2021 budget before the end of the calendar year. Uh, so with that, I'll open the floor to any questions that the council members or the mayor may have. We'd be happy to help. All right. All right, and move on. Yeah, ready to move on. All right. Let's see. Meeting number two, approving the appointment of Ms. Kerry Hustis as the Civil Service Board Secretary. Okay, we'd like to open for public hearing. Anyone who would like to speak on this motion, on this appointment? How many hands? Okay, I'm seeing if anybody wanting to speak. All right, nobody wanting to speak. I, I, I do have a question. What is, is there compensation remaining the same as previously or should it be stated in here? Um, it's the comp, whatever it's, it's stated. It, I think it's set by ordinance, right, Nicole? By ordinance, this is just something that uh, the board approve, approved, Carrie, the civil service board approved her, then it has to go before the council. Okay. On the council agenda. For, uh, has the same compensation is already done under ordinance, yes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. Yes. All right. So no one wanted to speak. Public hearing is now closed. Any council discussion? Okay. All in favor? Yay. 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 Five yeas, zero nays. Thank you, Ms. Hustis. Okay, right. new, number three, Ms. Judy Roman, on behalf of St. Rita, respectfully requests the city to provide barricades and or a police escort as they proceed around the block for a procession scheduled for Sunday, January 10th, 2021, after 11.30 a.m. mass. Okay, public hearing is now open. Okay, public hearing is now closed. Um, any council discussion? I'd just like to, um, I don't know, maybe caution, caution the council about approving um, I guess public gatherings at this time. That's all. Okay. I'm going to say approve it as long as the chiefs can handle the detail. All right, chief, you good? We're good. Well, as usually, we've handled them in the past. We're okay. going to handle this one also. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Yay. Yay. Okay. All right. Five yeas, zero nays. This motion passes. Clerk. I know um, Judy Johnson would like to address the council. Okay. And you, Miss Judy. Okay, so we're now open to address the council. Miss Judy. 
have 19 people participating in this or in this meeting. We need to have citywide participation <laughs> on the God bless you, Mayor. Thank, thank you. Uh, on this, on the colonial thing, we need to see the city needs to see the plans. Nobody's seen any of the plans that have been sent out. We had a meeting before where they showed us the plans. Mr. McCarran says they ha he can't do anything with the 15 acres that are commercial. It would make it would make it would make a one make a wonder along with the, the Blake that has an entrance on Jefferson Highway. So he can't say he doesn't have the, the place to put it on Jefferson Highway. He does. He's got 15 acres that are being undeveloped. Well, except for the Blake, which he told us five years ago, we'd never have that developed. Did you believe? Right. Did he say? I've never, I'm sorry. Say, I've never heard him say he can't. The man who came for the Blake told us years ago that they would never develop that commercial property. I was at the meeting, Craig. I mean, um, Eric. Also, but, Mr. McCarran said that these things are. You said you said Mr. McCarran said he can't put his property going out to Jefferson Highway. I've never heard Mr. McCarran say that. Whether he said he, that he can't, he said he won't. He doesn't want to. All right. Thank you. All right. He also said that these streets are going to be private. Well, that's great. That means the city won't have to do any kind of maintenance on those streets. Well, what about the drainage and the sewage lines underneath those streets? Are they going to be private too? Are they going to take care of them? Or are we going to have to bust up the street and then pay to have them fixed? Anybody got a question? Any got an answer on that? If the, streets are, private, if the streets are private, we do not have to maintain them. That's fine, but if they have a problem with the sewage underneath the streets, we have to tear up those streets to get to it. So who's going to pay for that? I believe that they're paying sewer service fees and paying their water bills to the, the Jefferson Parish Department. It would follow just as it follows under the city as now, because they'll be paying part of that on their water bills. So they'll be entitled to that repair. But who pays for the repair? We, City of Harahan. Correct. So we need to maintain the streets too. Those streets need to be turned over to the city just like everybody else's streets. We only have one private street that I know of in the city and that's the one next to Colonial Shopping Center. Correct. Well, I would like some answers, but I guess I'm not going to get them, huh? I, I think you just answered I every question you asked. Yeah. I'd like to comment. I don't believe there's any benefit accruing to the city by having the street turned over to Harahan. I think it's just a liability. I agree. So, Agreed. Well, it is, it is a liability, but it's a, it's a responsibility of the city to upkeep our streets and our lights and everything else that we pay for. But if these no. streets are going to be private, then the rest of the stuff should be private also. I'll call Mr. Danny in a little while and ask him if he'll just turn it over to the city. He's not going to bond not maintaining the streets. You, you're giving us more burden. I'd rather he start fixing the sewage and the and the, the uh, drainage lines that are going to be underneath those. Everything on Colonial property will be brand new. Brand new. Okay, Ms. Judy, you can continue. I, I didn't understand what Eric said. You, you said you want him to repair the sewer lines that's under the streets. There's no sewer lines there now. Everything he's developing is going to be brand new. It's going to have brand new sewer lines, brand new water lines, brand new fire hydrants, brand new drainage, brand new street. And they'll be there forever. So sooner or later, they're going to break down. Okay, Ms. Judy. That's it, folks. Y'all go ahead back. Anybody else? <laughs> Nicole? Nicole, you're muted. Nicole. There you are. Dane, I was muted. I muted myself. Sorry. Sorry. Can I speak now? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> just want to let everyone know that we met with David Trepanier at his house with Jason Asbill and eight or nine property owners on Colonial Club Drive a while back. And uh, Danny McCarron was there and he asked for the meeting with David Trepanier. And while we were there, we discussed a lot of things and toward the end, we just said, hey, let's just, let's just take a call for a vote. And the vote was 8-0 that we were all in favor of keeping the 75 foot buffer. And Danny McCarron just wanted to know where we stood as colonial residents about whether having houses all along Colonial Club Drive that he was promoting or a 75 foot buffer that could have a meandering walking path and landscaping and um, something that could be very special instead of the 40 acre park, at least we get a three acre something that, that's pretty special for the city. And I can't imagine a council that would ever, ever, ever think about that's in a law already at 1777 that states that we would have this 75 foot buffer and they would have, I don't know if this is the right word, the gall to give that up, to give up that green space. And it just, it amazes me that we had an 8-0 vote that night to keep the 75 foot buffer. And I just pray to God that, that this council doesn't get rid of that 75 foot buffer. Thank you. I don't see any other hands raised. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, and we'll close the address to council. Madam Clerk, Secretary's report. Okay, Secretary's report for October, $390,157. And um, the Secretary report for November and pay bills for November, um, half of our finance department was out um, with COVID. So we don't have those reports, but as soon as I get them, I will post them on the website immediately. And we'll just have to put these on the agenda, um, on the January agenda. But as soon as I get them, I'll have them posted on the website. We should get them this month. But anyway, um, moving on to reports. Okay, Chief Walker. I don't have a report available tonight. My uh, our records clerk is on extended leave. I will have reports when they're available to be the next meeting. I and the Harriet Police Department want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a very safe and happy new year. God bless. Okay, Chief St. Cyr. I'd just like to wish everyone a, a very Merry Christmas and a happy new year. And uh, if y'all need anything, give us a call. Councilman Asbill. Uh, yeah, just one thing. The um... Well, two things, but on Saturday uh, from, oh, no, I'm not going to quote the times, but on Saturday throughout the day, there's going to be a, um, a sign display in front of the Harahan Fire Department, and uh, it'll be a picture opportunity. You can go stick your head in a light bulb and take a picture. Um, there'll be a post going out on Facebook, on all the Facebook channels tomorrow, and, um, and come by uh, with the family, take a picture in front of this cool little display thing, and, um, and get a treat for the kids while you're there. Uh, and we'll post the times and all that. Other than that, we'll see y'all before then at another meeting, but Merry Christmas if we don't. All right, Councilman Moody. Uh, yeah, I'd like to wish everybody Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and just uh, remind everybody that COVID is still with us and be safe. Uh, we should have it behind us in the next few months, hopefully. So just continue to do um, smart things. Thank you. All right, Councilman Johnson. I mean, Councilman Chatelain. Yeah, I'm mute. <laughs> You're muted. I can just wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And uh, I did hear a rumor that if the weather's okay, uh, Santa Claus will be riding through the streets of Harrahan, Harrahan on Sunday. Um, <laughs> so we ready. Hope everybody's out, ready to wave and see Santa Claus. Thank you. All right, Councilman Johnston. Uh, Merry Christmas and have a happy and safe New Year. Councilman Wheeler. 
Hold on. Uh, yeah, so a couple of things. Um, we, are, we do have the budget hearing that'll be coming up on December 22nd. That is at 5.30. That'll be discussing the 2021 budget. And any council members, if y'all have any questions about that budget, if y'all can send those to Todd Turney on prior to, maybe he can answer some of your questions. If not, so the budget hearing will be on December 22nd at 5.30. Also, we will then adopt the 2021 budget on December 28th at 6.00. So that, of course, will be the open meeting as they all went. I believe, Mayor, we're doing those through Zoom, correct? Yes, The next two are through Zoom. Yes, ma'am, we are. And uh, again, like everybody else, hope everybody has a happy and Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And just stay safe. Thank you. All right, y'all, this has been one um, crazy year um, for being, being mayor and working with this council. But we have done a lot of positive things. We've definitely you know, try to turn lemons into lemonade. And we, I think we've done very well this year. Uh, like I've said, almost from day one, taking on this administration, I have um, a wonderful team. I consider them to be the best team that Harahan's ever had, but I'm a little impartial because we're all so very close and we work so very hard. And I'm so very appreciative of how much time and dedication this team puts in. I mean, we saw it in the storm, the night of the storm, we were haul out on the street, cutting down trees, getting them out there. We had Councilman Chatterling checking wires. We pulling trees and branches. It was, it's just unbelievable to, to be a part of a team, you know, and for us really a part of a family um, now after two years of working so close with one another. Um, I hope the citizens get to see it. We're always there for you guys. I know, I believe this is the hardest working council I've ever seen. And I've been on three councils prior, but I'll tell you this, they, they are the hardest working council I've ever seen. And, um, and I am so honored and blessed to be with them. So a very special Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you guys. And a very special and Merry, Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's to everyone else out there. Um, you guys, we are so available. We work so hard for you. And we're always here. So we hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the year. And I guess we'll see you soon at the budget meetings if you decide to attend. If not, we'll visit you next year. And hopefully we'll get to see Santa driving around on Sunday. So thank you very much. And, uh, and again, I wish you guys the best holidays ever. Madam Clerk. Hey, bills. A bills paid in October. Total expenditures, $646,682.20. And the November bills will be on in January. Okay. No exact. Well, Mayor, Mayor, I'm sorry. Can I say something real quick? You Just to remind the public, um, Madam, don't we have a box outside the door for them to drop off their property tax payments? We have a lot uh, drop box right outside the front door of City Hall. You can drop off anything, your property tax payments, um, you know, anything you need to drop off. And we check that box daily. Okay. Just to let the citizens know, I know... Uh, Councilman Chatelain and I were at City Hall yesterday and there was a gentleman that showed up. It was after hours, but we did point him in the direction of the box. Um, but if they want a receipt, do they need to supply a self-addressed stamped envelope back for y'all to mail them back the receipt? And obviously no cash payments, correct? Right, absolutely. Okay. Thank I you. will believe that's where everyone's supposed to drop off their gifts for the fire chief. Yeah. Oh, I was getting ready to jump in front of me. You beat me to it, boy. Yeah, right. I don't know, Todd. Todd, it's a small box. That is, you and the police, y'all and the police department, those presents wouldn't fit in there for all so y'all. Just do. unbox the refrigerator, so I'm going to bring that refrigerator box there over there. There you go. It fits them king cakes and all. Awesome. Look, I will warn. I will warn. Um, I love my mother in law to death, but I will warn the public. Uh, not to put it in the post office box, put it in the drop box right by the front door of City Hall. <laughs> yeah. All right. I love her to death, but it is, it is what it is. Did it come back to her in the mail? <laughs> not yet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Return sender. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I got a motion. I got a motion by Councilman right. Aswell, second by Councilman Johnson to adjourn. All in favor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Five yeah, zero nays. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.